Hello everyone. In this recording, we will find how to find the price of a bond. Why is that concept important? Well, several reasons. One is you need to utilize the time value of money because we're going to see that the bond is composed of two elements, an annuity and a single payment. And you have to discount those two items to the present value. So you have the time value concept involved. And this is important because you also need the time value concept when it comes to leases, when it comes to notes payable, when it comes to pension. Also, the price of a bond is also covered in your finance course, investment course. So you need to know how to find the price value of a bond, not only for your accounting courses, but also for your finance courses. Let's go ahead and look at this example to illustrate the concept to integrate the time value of money with accounting and a, fi a finance concept. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So in this example, Adam Corporation issues half a million of 9% bonds due in 10 years with interest payable semi-annually. Let's translate this to simple English. Adam Corporation wants to borrow half a million dollar Adam Corporation is willing to pay 9% interest now they'll they will have to pay this money back in 10 years because they are borrowing the money and they are paying interest semi-annually because they are paying interest semi-annually it means they have to make 20 payments why 20 payments 10 years semi-annually that's 10 times 2 at the time of the issue the market for such bond is 10% so we are told the ongoing market rate is 10% and we need to find the price of the bond. The first thing you want to know is if I do find the price of the bond, should it be half a million? Should it be more than a half a million? Should it be less than a half a million? So before you perform any computation, I hope you know that the price of this bond will be less than half a million. This bond will sell at a discount. Now, why would that be the case? It's the case because the company is offering the company is offering 9%. The market is paying 10%. Well, if the company cannot pay the ongoing market rate, no one in the right mind will pay the company half a million and earn 9% when they can go somewhere else, give their half a million to some other party and earn 10%. The market means similar companies to Adam Corporation. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means the bond will sell at a discount and we have to find the price of the bond, which will be a discounted price. Now let's review the bond is composed of two elements and those are the payment and the face value. So when you lend the money, when you lend the money, let's assume you're the investor, you're the creditor and you gave this money to Adam Corporation, you will be expected to receive 20 payments you'll be able to receive 20 payments and you would receive the face value. So you would receive two things, a series of payments and the face value. And how do you find out what's the price of the bond? You discount what you're going to do. You're going to take the payments, which is an annuity, and we're going to take the face value of the bond and discount those to the present value using the market rate. Now, why do we use the market rate? Because every investor, every lender wants to earn the market rate. So let's start by discounting the payments. What's the payment? So if you lend your money today, you gave Adam Corporation your money, how much will you receive? Well, every six months, you're going to take your half a million dollar, the principal amount times the interest rate times one half because one half is for six months and your payments is $22,500. It means each one of those axes for the next 20 periods, which is over 10 years, will you would receive 22,500 this is an annuity 
this is an ordinary annuity what we're gonna do we're gonna take this ordinary annuity and discount it to the present value now what do I mean by discounting it to the present value you're gonna go to the time value table or use your calculator uh, you know, most likely you'll have a time value table if you're taking an intermediate accounting course or maybe your teacher wants you to use a calculator it doesn't really matter the point is you're gonna go to the present value of an annuity table and specifically it's gonna be ordinary because the first payment is due six months from the issuance date on the top you're gonna to have the interest rate the interest rate is five percent on the side you're gonna have the period and the factor is 12.4622 rounding so this is rounding so don't worry if that if the answer is a few dollars difference it's because rounding so this is the present value factor now if you don't know what I just did the present value you have to go to Farhat lectures the time value of money lectures so we're gonna take the 22,500 multiplied by the present value ordinary factor and equal to 20 I equal to 5 and the value of those payments alone are 280,400 so the investor will say okay I'm going to receive in total payments valued at present value 280,400 valued at 5% semi-annually or 10% annually which is the market return also we're gonna take half a million the face value which is the face value component and I'm gonna discount this at n equal to 20 I equal to 5% remember you get the half a million only once therefore you're gonna use the present value of one the present value of a dollar so once again you're gonna to go to the present value of one and this is a different table again your textbook most likely the table will be at the end of the chapter or in the appendix or your teacher might ask you to use a calculator so this is this is the present value of one always the present value of one all the factors are less than one because whatever you do you're gonna get less than the principal amount so we're gonna do you're gonna go to the five percent 20 periods and the factor is 0.3769 again this is rounding so we're gonna take half a million times this factor and the half a million worth today 188,445 now the price of the bond is those two together which is 468,845 so we found the, we found the price of the bond it means the value of the bond today because it's paying less than the market is 468,845 indeed I told you this bond will sell at a discount and the discounted amount is 31,155 which is the face value minus the cash that the company would receive today will give us the discounted amount 31,155 now it's important to go ahead since we computed the price of the bond to find the journal entry so what would Adam Corporation debit they will debit cash because that's the only amount they would receive 400 68,845 um, they will credit bonds payable for the full amount because they're responsible for paying back half a million and the difference they will debit an account called discount on bonds which is a contra liability contra liability the bonds payable and they will amortize this bond for amortize it um, with interest expense and we'll see that later when we talk about amortization but this is basically what we did here is a lot in terms of bonds a lot in, in a sense that you found the price of the bond and we journalize the entry now what are you gonna with, what are you gonna do with this discount you're gonna amortize it either using the straight line method or using the effective interest rate method and we teach you both whether it's straight line or effective interest rate method so this is basically the building stocks of the bonds if you don't know this much you should not proceed into amortization or interest payment or bond retirement which we'll talk about in separate recordings what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional lectures look at additional multiple choice true false exercises that's going to help you consolidate this knowledge help you understand this concept better so you will do better whether you are a CPA candidate accounting students finance student invest in yourself Farhat lectures is always here to help